Hi there, I'm Phil Howell. I'm a plant breeder at NIAB and I'd like to show you one of our research field trials based just south of Cambridge um, where we're looking at our quite diverse material, so these aren't commercial varieties, and we're looking at their response to less than optimal conditions. Um, so as I'm sure you can see, we've got quite high blackgrass pressure at this site. Um, like many, it was late drilled, so drilled in the last week of October, and the wet conditions ever since have, have made black gas control very difficult. Um, and what we can see in this part of the field is the difference in types um, from this quite diverse material. So we have some very uh, quite tall, high biomass material. You can see this is a, a bearded type. Um, in contrast to commercial variety KWS Zayat, we have a number of commercial bread making types in this trial just so that we can make comparisons and we can benchmark, see how well the diverse material does compared to the more elite material. The black glass seems particularly bad in the, in the shorter, more elite variety. And then as we move through the trial a bit more, we have another couple of breeding lines. This one's still quite vigorous, but shorter, high black glass pressure. And this one has a, a quite vivid, waxless character, very big flag leaves, quite competitive, seems to be a little bit better at outcompeting the black grass. So lots of types of diversity in the trial, lots of different crop heights, um, and we're interested to see how this contrasts in, in yield and quality. So as well as the, the wet winter and autumn, we've now come into a very dry spring. We have a weather station here on farm, which has shown that the last significant rainfall was on March the 17th, when we had 13 mil. We've not had anything above five or six mil since then, only about 30 millimeters since then. And that's affecting the plots in different ways. Some varieties, such as this one on my right, seem to be quite hammered by the drought, while others, like the one on my left, seem to be a bit more tolerant. So the purpose of this trial is all about genetic diversity. We have all of this fantastic diversity, which we've captured from some of the wild relatives of wheat, and we're trying to bring this into varieties um, that modern breeders can use moving forwards. And one of the reasons we're interested in this is we think this diversity will be useful in situations in the future. The situations might involve reduced inputs, lower fertilizer, lower fungicides. So the varieties of the future will be more reliant on their inherent genetic resilience. We're treating this trial with only 70% of the nitrogen that we'd normally give a trial. And the reason we're doing that is that we're trying to pull apart the differences in responsiveness to nitrogen in this diverse material. What we tend to expect is that as you reduce the nitrogen, the yield of everything drops off. And we see this to an extent, but what we've also seen is that some varieties seem to cope better under these lower nitrogen stresses. So we'll be looking at the yield under these lower nitrogen, but also we'll take it through and look at the grain protein concentration and even right the way through to bread making and see which varieties are the winners and losers under lower nitrogen conditions. So one question farmers often come to us with is these trials are all very well, but they don't reflect a real life situation. The official trial system is often accused of being too perfect. It's the best part of the field with maximum inputs. So is this sort of trial what we need more of in the future, where we have reduced inputs and we're really testing material under much more realistic situations? Hopefully that way we can find good material to move forwards into the future.